Well, I hope you guys had a great 4th of July yesterday. Um, we were off so because of the holiday, so um, welcome back. Okay, now, uh, this is going to be Film Scoring Tuesday, uh, where we do the same thing. We look at a, a scene, I take out the music. This one's gonna be extra splashy and fun. Um, you guys are doing great every week, uh, and then we'll see the results uh, Friday just like normal. So you have a little bit less time. So if you can get it to me by tomorrow, usually you guys are really fast. I mean, usually by the same day, but by Wednesday would be great. Knives Out was really scary last week, I know. I didn't mean to scare the kids, but um, you know, but you guys did a really good job with the string quartet, as I like to do. Nothing like that this week. So nobody will be scared. This is gonna be super fun. We've talked a little bit about this kind of style of, of and this is, not a musical, but, you know, part of the MGM vault of classics. So, um, today we're going to be looking at the 1953 film, Easy to Love. Easy to love, which is a, a term, you know, people say about me a lot. I'm very easy to love. No, or they say the opposite. Um, we know that song, we should, because we know the composer who wrote it, Cole Porter. Did a whole class on Cole Porter. It's nice when I can say say things and you guys know, oh yeah, you know about, it. oh yeah, we, I remember vaguely. Um, th because he was an important American songwriter. Um, Cole Porter was great. He wrote the lyrics too, which was very rare because songwriters, including, you know, Richard Rogers. Um, Jerome Kern, you know, some of the best. They didn't even write their own lyrics, but uh, Cole Porter did. Um, this doesn't really have anything to do with Cole Porter. I, I doubt he even liked the movie. Um, I'll, and But uh, Tony Martin sings the song Easy to Love in this movie, so it's a good title. This features a very lovely Esther Williams. Esther Williams, we've maybe talked about her a little bit. We're gonna be scoring a scene um, from this movie, and, and mostly this movie's about her. I don't, I've never seen the whole movie. I don't even know what the plot is. It's probably not super important. We understand the plot in order to know the context of the scene. It's just gonna be very fun, um, you know. Uh, well, we'll see, we'll see it later, but um, she's, uh, she plays a water skier. <laughs> star of course um and with van johnson and he's the manager of the of the place and but then tony martin's also you know both of them are vying for her to for her love you know and who is she gonna pick in the end so mostly that's it she's pregnant during this movie i can, i mean unbelievable what she's doing in this movie being pregnant so um we'll talk about her life in a little bit so directed by charles walters big hollywood director and got to start um, choreographing MGM musicals in the 40s and 50s. Did a ton of movies though as a director, including like Easter Parade and High Society, which is one of my favorite, personal favorites, 1956. Um, but mostly it's about Busby Berkeley. You know, he was, and he got that on screen credit. He made sure of that. We know about Busby Berkeley, a genius at, <laughs> remember he started with military, you know, he was a military leader with, and then you know, all and would choreograph, you know, military parades and marches. And then he, and then he, he took that into Hollywood somehow. And, you know, his whole thing was the big numbers with showgirls and, you know, kaleidoscopes, you know, on screen performances with these, with these immaculate sets that they would build. Uh, he was a genius. He's one of those things where when you see it, you can't believe these things were happening in the 30s because he starts in the 30s. So by by fifty three he's you know a seasoned director. I mean it's mo it's his vision and and so these scenes are, even today I don't even know how you would recreate them. And we talked about his you know Big Lebowski pays homage. Uh, all, all the I mean Busby Berkeley amazing. So we know about him. So mostly even though it's directed by Charles Walters who also was a choreographer. It's Busby's movie, you know, you can tell with the touch. You want to go over there? Let's go over there. It, it's, let's go from Hollywood Bowl to where they filmed it on location in Florida. Not there anymore. Cypress Gardens is now Legoland. So budget's about 1.8 million and this makes close to 4 million. So this is a big hit in 1953. What's going on there? Well, we scored another 1953 movie from here to eternity. That very 
romantic, you know, sexy scene at the beach. 53 is a big year for Marilyn Monroe. Well, this is when she's first in Playboy, 1953, but you know, let's keep it kid friendly here. We don't need to be, but you know, she's also becoming a huge movie star. And that's, you know, and so Hugh Hefner had the genius idea of taking somebody who's about to be very famous and then getting a hold of her right before that. So, you know, she's exploding on the big screen with gentlemen prefer blondes. So it's a big year for her. So Esther Williams, born where? Inglewood, where, where we go to school, actually. So uh, lived a long life, born in Inglewood in 1921, and um, made, she was so famous. From the 40s, 50s, made, they call them aqua musicals. I had never heard that term. And, and it's just what it sounds like, you know, just a lot of great big sparkling music with these, with the synchronized swimming and all these diving. I mean, the um, talent is so amazing that, um, for them to make a movie and for us to see it, I, I'd, I'd imagine that you're pretty blown away by some of these images because even today it doesn't look dated. I mean, there's some cuts that look a little awkward, but I mean, for the most part, I mean, you know, this is, these are really talented people doing these things in, you know, real life. So, um, so I mean, Esther Williams was just great. So the music, there's there's different MGM composers attached to this. So it's, it's hard to, aside from Cole Porter's song, um, there's Lenny Hayton, who's a composer and arranger. George Stahl, who's a music director, composer, arranger. I, I think this is, lack of a better word, like Hollywood stock music and arrangement. I mean, not that they, I mean, they worked incredibly hard for this, but these kind of MGM musicals, some of them, the songs were very important, you know, by big composers, but uh, m mostly it's the elaborate orchestrations and arrangements that were in the background. Um, where melody was there, but it wasn't all, it wasn't about the melody of the song, if that makes sense. It was about the arrangement of the song, uh, the feel of the song. I mean, we, t we talked about orchestration, going back to Rimsky Korsakoff and all that, you know, special stuff. These guys in the 50s are, are doing orchestration and it's popular music. This is kind of not lounge music, but light music. And I, I say light music like that because Leroy Anderson was kind of the king, and we talked about Leroy with, you know, as the king of light music. We talked about David Rose with Holiday for Strings and The Stripper, and those that kind of style of 50s music that I, I think is really groovy. Maybe I'm in the minority, but um, I love that kind of music. Uh, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's not like the big song is at the end in, these, in some of these movies. It's more just the big number is there and the music supporting it really well especially in the scene we're gonna look at. You wanna look at it? Let's see it. This is kind of at the end, and um, it's just spectacular. There's no other word, so uh, let's take a look at the scene. Just remarkable, right? I mean, I, I, I can't get over it. It's so, so awesome. Um, I don't, it's probably so awesome that you, I don't even know if you were listening to the music, you felt the music. It's one of those, like if you were to hear that kind of piece at a concert hall, it might not be super memorable because I can't really hum any of the melodies, but we see the sparkly orchestration of it, right? So we're gonna have to come up with something like that. But um, let's let's just take a look at it just without any music and it could look a little funny.
So trying to find something, you know, from the 1950s would be really great. You know, 40s, 50s, 60s is fine. Let's stay in, in those three decades of something that's gonna be sparkly, splashy, exciting, upbeat, um, in the realm of, of, you know, I mean, definitely David Rose or Leroy Anderson, some of those names, but let's, let's keep it in the 1940s to the 1960s and make sure it's kind of a big arrangement that could go with this. You put a string quartet like last week for Knives Out, the scene dies. So this, we're getting particular in what I need you to choose, um, which you're, I know that you're learning that, of course, that, that would be terrible if you put Jaws to it. It, 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 it would be funny. It would be it would be so inappropriate that it would be funny. So I don't want you to do anything like that. I want you to match the score um, for this, which is, yeah, big, upbeat, sparkly, magical. Um, uh, tons of energy though, because there's so much energy in the scene. It's kind of funny to see that she's you know she's got a smile during this whole th you know part while she's pregnant. <laughs> um, just a massive talent, Esther Williams. So that's easy to love. We're, we have a short week, but we'll see the results on Friday. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day. Okay, bye.